Hi guys, it's Desiree. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about all the books that I started this summer but didn't get to finish. And also my DNFs. watch my everything that I read during the summer or everything I read this summer I posted that last week I'm posting this a week after but I said towards the end of the video oh, I'm just gonna film all this in a separate video because that video is already an hour long of me filming um yeah this is that video so splitting this up because I want to start posting more on this channel on Mondays and yeah so you guys are gonna get a new video every Monday um, also, with that being said, this channel has become a book channel, but I also want to start transitioning more, like, life videos into it. I do want to get back into doing, like, vlogs and stuff like that, so you guys will also be getting that on this channel, too. forgot to mention that earlier. So, some of the books I DNF'd, or I've started and haven't read, I do actually have here. Most of them are on the Kindle, because as I said in that video, if you have not read the video, or if you read, if you have not watched that video... I guess I can give you guys a little refresher. So, I bought my Kindle at the actually very beginning of the summer, which I did not remember. And, um, yeah, I've read so many books this summer on here. So, a lot of them are going to be on here. You're probably just going to see a picture of it. Okay. Um, actually, before I get started into everything I started, and actually, no, I could talk about this book last, because technically I did start it yesterday. Alright, so. Oh, if I'm looking down, I have my list right here. Starting with the first book that I started and did not finish. Um, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuest. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Sorry, Casey. But I, this book right here, the infamous Red, White, and Royal Blue. If I'm not mistaken, I think they just wrapped up filming the movie for this book. Um, I, honestly, I've really been liking this book. I started it in June because of Pride Month. Oh, sorry. I started it in June because of Pride Month because I really just, honestly, I have not read any, like, sapphic or gay romances or, like, male, loving male, like, books at all. I have not read any. So this is my first one. Um, and I'm really, really excited. It has been really good. I am in, honestly, I have not, actually, I have not picked up this book in so long. So, I'm on page, not that page, I'm on page 158, but, um, I really was liking this book, but it low-key was just moving really, really fast paced for me. This is, might be a little spoiler, but they literally have their first kiss in chapter 5. Like, what? Chapter 5, and I think that was, like, their second time seeing each other. Granted, it really was only for... It was like a drunk kiss type of thing, so like, mm, okay, whatever. I don't know, I just feel like this book was moving kind of fast. I like, look at how thick she is, and I want to say like, right here is where like we have our first situation. But, so yeah, I just put it down because I wanted to read other books, and yeah. But I'm honestly, I've been considering picking up this book again. There's a map. I've been picking, think, I've been considering picking up this book really, really soon again because I really want to read it. Because, um, the movie, I think, I think the movie might be coming out later this year or early next year. And I just really want to finish it because I did like this book. I just did not get to finish it. So, the next book that I started and did not finish, which, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm not going to lie. I'm struggling with this one. We'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han. This is the last book in the Summer I Turn Pretty series. Um, and I really, really want to finish this because I just want to put this series behind me. If you did not see my other video, you saw, you already heard my opinions on this book and what I rated this book. Um, but with this one, honestly, this is not the accurate page that I'm on because I found an audiobook on YouTube that I've been using. So I want to say I'm like, actually, I might even be a couple chapters. I might be on like chapter six or seven. Actually, um, this book, I... I know how it ends. I know, I actually know the entirety of this book because I just spoiled it for myself. And, no. Honestly, between these books, I would have been perfectly happy if we never even got them. If you give me the first book and just leave it at that, 
I would be so happy. I think I really like, I, I don't think, I know, I really like the first book. I will always probably hold the first book really near and dear to my heart because the first book just embodies everything about summer. Like, all the nostalgia I felt of all my summers growing up, I felt in that book and I loved it and I love that book so like I think that book just has a special place in my heart but these two books I could really care less if we ever even got them to be honest I do not think now being at the end of the summer I turned pretty serious I would have been completely okay if we just like maybe give me like the rest of the winter scenes at the end of the summer I turned pretty that happened in here like the cute little moment between Conrad and Belly with like the fireplace the hot chocolate all that Give that to me in the end of Summer I Turn Pretty and end the book at that and I would have been so happy. So the next book that I started, I actually started this book on the plane ride to Mexico and still reading it. Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you guys know Tay, listen, TJR is one of my favorite authors. I think her and Kennedy Striner and Tila Herbert are probably my top three right now. Freaking love her. Also, look at this really cute bookmark my aunt got me when we were in Cancun. It says Cancun, and then right here, it like has a little braided, dangly, like doll, like a mini little doll. How freaking cute. And it just sits in my book like this. So, I, not gonna lie, I love Tila Jenkins Reads, and Obviously, Malibu Rising, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and Daisy Jones and the Six are the top three most talked about books out of her books. And when, excuse me, when I started reading this book, I was like, hmm, I don't know if I really like this. But the more that I've gotten into it, I'm starting to like it a lot more. Because this feels like a reality TV show, kind of. Like, or I feel like I'm watching a TV show in my head. Like, I love how we'll start, like, talking about Nina, and then it'll just, like, break off at her page, and then we'll get a flashback to a, a situation that happened with her parents, and then it'll stop, and then we'll get a flashback, and we'll move on to, like, Kit, and then we'll stop, and we'll move on to the next person. I love how it's stopping and going to other people while still connecting them, and you're still not, like, completely forgetting everything that's happened prior. It's so good. So, in this book, it follows siblings. If Mick Riva, Mick Riva is the father that is in this book. Honestly, from what I've heard, Mick is like the connection between Daisy Jones and the Six, Seven, of, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Malibu Rising, and Carrie Soto. It's, I think they call it like the Mick Riva universe. So, yeah. Or the Hollywood continu continuation, which is what I call it. Anyway, either way, besides the point, this is the book about his children. This is about a party. This is like the party of the year. Happens every August, which is funny because I'm reading it in August. And um, this party is so big, like it's the literal party of the summer. And this year, the party gets just even more out of hand than usual. Um, what I'm excited about this book is because obviously Daisy Jones is my is my first number one five star book ever and in the book it talks about this part and they don't talk about this party like I think she met who she met in this she met somebody at this party um and what I really like at the jump of this book it talks a lot about like it mentions the other books it mentions Daisy Jones and Six it mentions Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and it mentions Carrie Soto which if you don't know is TJR's newest release um, which I'm really excited to read that book too. So I do want to get back into this book. I have had it put down for a while. But I do want to get back into it because it is getting really, really good. To be honest, these two books, I see myself picking up very, very soon again. Um, because why not? They're really, really good. So this book I started but DNF'd for now because I just was at a standstill. And I was just like, mm, I don't really feel like reading this. So Shameless King by Maya Hutchinson. Hush, did I say Hush, something like that? Anyways, this is the first book in the Kings of Written House series. I've heard this series is really good, and it, from what I was reading, I, I DNF'd it at thirty-seven percent, so chapter twelve, 
it was really good but at that point I just felt like it was kind of like dragging for a little bit and I was just like I really don't feel like reading this that book is enemies to lovers academic rivals and that's all I'm really much gonna say about that book um, the next book that I started but haven't finished is Colty by Marina Zapata. I also put this back on my um, TBR because although I did kind of get into it, I was just like, mm, almost 600 pages and I know it's going to be a really slow burn because that's what Marina's books are. I was like, mm, I'll just give it a minute before I get into it. But Colty, which I really, really like because it kind of reminds me of this Formula One book that I'm reading right now. Um... It's pretty much like, take your idol, like, okay, so pretty much. It follows, what's her name? Sal and Marina. So Sal is like, she's on the soccer team. She is like the soccer gal. And Cal, Colty, is like, he's like the Serena Williams. Mm, actually, that's, nobody's like Serena Williams. Let me take that shit back. He is like, he's a pro soccer player, like the best. And he gets the opportunity to coach her soccer team. And obviously, if your idol gets the opportunity to coach you, you are like, you don't really know how to fathom. But you know that saying that they always say, like, maybe you shouldn't meet your celebrities because they don't live up to what you expect. That is the definition of culty. I think Sal thought that, obviously he was rough around the edges, but I think she thought that like he was going to come into this team like very warm and welcoming to them and still keep his heart exterior but he's just an asshole he is an asshole an asshole like what i was reading like i was fuming foaming at the mouth he was making me so mad um so yeah that's pretty much that obviously like it's a romance book you can kind of piece together what's supposed to happen um oh next book started and have a finish the handmaid's tales so if you, one thing about me one thing about me, fucking love The Handmaid's Tales. I got into it when season three was airing. Got into it when right or no, right before season three was about to drop. I watched season binged one season one and two. Man, my mom binged season one and two with me, and then we we've been watching since season three. Season 5, the trailer for season 5 just came out and it actually comes out next month, I think September 7th. And I cannot be more excited, I cannot wait. So obviously when I was in Barnes and Nobles and I saw the book, I was like, because I love Hemi's Tales so much and I'm having like a really, like a really long slump because they haven't come back yet, I'm gonna start reading the books. Fun fact though, I just recently found out that I can get the Hemi's Tales on Kindle Unlimited for free. So, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to dual read, dual read, read it, phys read the physical copy on here and then read the ebook on here. To be honest, I might download the ebook and just read it myself so that I can give this book to my mom whenever she f finishes and ends with us because she says she wanted to read this. And I tend to read books a lot faster on my Kindle and I can make the print of this book bigger because I need you guys to see how small the how small the, the font is on this book like I can read small font but not that small it's just too much yes so that's actually the last physical book I have to talk about all the other ones are on Kindle Unlimited so Manhattan this is the fourth book in the Becker Brothers series the Becker Brothers series by Kennedy Steiner love Kennedy Steiner I literally professed my love in my other video um this follows the youngest brother, him and his childhood best friend. So it's childhood friends, the lovers. And they used to be super, super close when they were younger. He ended up getting into a relationship. Get back over here. Anyways, um, he got into a relationship pretty much completely pieced her out. And then um, now that he's broken up with their kind of friends again. If you heard me talk about Neat. In my other video, um, it explains, like, that within the series, there's, like, a slight mystery, like, subplot. And in this, in Manhattan, it's a continuation of that, like, subplot, like, stuff. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna spoil much about that book because... 
that I'm reading Marriage for One. Um, this is like, I want to say the book of the Kindle Unlimited. Like when I got Kindle Unlimited, this book was advertised to me so much that I finally decided I'm going to start reading it. And it's kind of good so far. I have, I've had it on hold. I've had it on hold for a minute, but it's getting good. Um, this is Fake Marriage. And pretty much, I don't remember the love interest name. Oh god, okay, so I don't remember the love interest's name. But she wants to own her own coffee shop. And her uncle, when he, like, he was going to let her use his building that he has. And he passes away, and obviously his kids get the right to the building now. His kids don't really care for her, so they're trying to shut her out. And in his will, he said that if she gets married, pretty much that the property will become her husband's and hers and she can still do what she wants with it for a year so he okay so our love interest is pretty he's a lawyer so he tells her like we can get married i can get the property and i'll let you rent it for a year you can have your coffee shop we both win because i got a property you get your coffee shop we win win and that's pretty much how it is he is the biggest grumpy, okay not the biggest, he's pretty grumpy because obviously he doesn't want to get feelings because it's just strictly a business deal and it's not becoming a business deal. So, on to the books that I DNF'd. So, I think we're going to start with the books that I DNF'd but want to come back to first and then we're going to talk about the books that I DNF'd and just aren't going to pick up again. So, books that I DNF'd and are going to come back to Black Shot by Kennedy Ryan so I talked about this in my last book but I'm gonna talk about it like I'm gonna speed it up so pretty much I DNF'd it at 40% chapter 16 and specifically in that chapter specifically where I stopped something was happening and I uh, when it comes to that type of stuff I'm pretty much a hard out in books unless unless the person Oh god, how do I explain this without spoiling? So something is happening in chapter 16. And I'm pretty much hard out for it unless the other person is a complete asshole. Then I can look past it. But in this scenario, I can't look past it because the other person is a sweetheart and doesn't deserve this. So with that being said, that is why I DNF'd that book. Um, I might come back to it because like I said, I read Longshot and Longshot heavily talks about domestic violence. And stuff so much worse than what is happening in block shot and I didn't DNF it it did take me a long time to finish it I didn't DNF it and so for me to DNF block shot or something that is so tiny is kind of stupid but at the same time I'm not gonna force myself to read I'm gonna try to force myself to like read series because they talked about so yeah next book I DNF was shameless King did I talk about this before yeah I think I did just talk about Shameless King. Um, DNF the chapter 12, 37%. It's just not hitting right now. And I just don't feel like reading a book like that right now. Um, Colty also DNF'd because where I am right now, it's kind of... Like, I, I understand Marina Zapata is a slow burn. Art, like, author, I knew that going into this book. But at least with, like... So with... with From Love with Lukov, although I knew... Actually, I didn't know it was going to be a slow burn, but although it was a slow burn, we were having interactions between Lukoff and Jasmine constantly with Colty. Like, they've had, like, two two um, interactions. All the interactions since then have been with other people. So, yeah, that's why I DNF'd it. But, I mean, I was only I was only on Chapter 9 to, like, 23%. Last book I DNF'd right now that I'm going to consider coming back to is Manhattan by Kennedy Steiner. Because I DNF'd it because um, I just don't feel like finishing the Becker's Brothers series right now. To be honest, I wasn't even going to read Manhattan, but I felt like I, the sub, like the mystery subplot that's going on goes straight into Manhattan. And I really want to know what's happening with that. Like I really want to get to the bottom of that like mystery subplot. So that's why I was going to read Manhattan, but right now I just don't have it in me to read Manhattan. So yeah, okay. Going back to books that I DNF'd and I'm not going to be reading again. 
Um, get number one, straight off the back, Ugly Love. I already talked about why I DNF'd this. Anyways, I went on a whole rant about Ugly Love. I'm not going to give you guys the plot of it. Everybody knows what Ugly Love is. Everybody's, everybody knows what this book's about. I hate this book. I hate this book. I gave it a one star because it's the lowest rating I could give it on Goodreads. Um, and I DNF'd. And I am on page 137. So honestly, I'm about to be in the middle of chapter 15. I hate this book. Um, I don't think, I'm sorry if you're Colleen Stan, do not just skip over this. Like, don't even interact with it. I hate it. Don't want to read this. I'm honestly going to probably donate this book because I, like, don't want it that much. Um, took a book from my god away, sorry. No. No, no. I can give you, I can put up my review. I'm going to put up my review, but it has spoilers. Um, so, if you're planning on reading this, don't read my review, but I, no, it's a no for me. This book is just absolutely, like, I, there's literally nothing else I can say about it, but it's just terrible. I'm literally gonna give this, honestly, I might give this to my cousin, because I don't know if she might want to read this, but whoever wants it can have it. So, sorry, Zena. Um, A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly, I think her name's, her last name's Coley, something like that, Col something, this book wherever I put it that book um yeah no I read I started reading it because I knew it was gonna be a sad book and I really really wanted a book that was sad and was gonna make me cry but the way the way that the male main character was talking to his parents and talking to everybody else was just so beyond disrespectful and I really 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 did not like how he pretty much cornered um the female main character like in the way that he did it like I understand he wanted to get his answers and he wanted to talk to her and she was not talking to him so he kind of had to corner her but how like the aggression he had when he was like cornering her like he saw that she was not like he saw that she was crying that she was not she didn't want to talk about it and he would not like he was aggressive about it and I was like no I'm not not reading that so I did not do that um, the last book that I didn't have to will not be going back to is the Fast series by Kate, forgot her last name, um, but the first book I was reading Fast and Hard, DNF to chapter 30, um, page 37, I started reading this series like a couple, I want to say like maybe like, yeah, a couple weeks after I had finished Dirty Air because it was a Formula One series, I was really, really missing the Formula One books, um, but it just, I don't know, it it was it felt too similar to Dirty Air to the Dirty Air series and it just the way like in the first book I don't remember their names but the male main character the way that he was like obviously he didn't like he didn't like the female main character because she was like the whole point of her being there is to like babysit him but just the way that he was talk like you cannot like somebody and you can do whatever you need to do to get them to leave you alone but just the way that he was talking to her was like absolutely i was foaming at the mouth mad i was so mad i was like ready to fight so absolutely not gonna happen so those are all the books that i did not read or dnf'd real quickly some books that i want to talk about because i don't want this this video to be all about like books that i didn't touch and like negative books i do want to as of right now update you guys on the books that i'm reading So it is August 31st when I am, um, damn, why am I bringing it? It's August 31st when I'm filming this. You guys will probably be getting this book, I mean, this video. Can you tell that I'm just off today? You guys will probably be getting this video, like, August, uh, September 12th. So it might have changed from when I am telling you this. So the books that I am currently going back and forth between as of right now is Morphine by Sam Sam Lynn, I think is how you say her last name. So I found out about this book on TikTok when I was going through the Lauren Asher like Formula One like book um hashtag. I found out about this book. This is her debut book. I believe it's gonna be the first in a series. So I was like really excited because one 
I've never been around for somebody's debut book. So I was like, okay, I want to read it. And it's Formula One. It's a female Formula One racer. So I was like, even better, I'm going to read this. So as of right now, I am only like 6% in the book. It's 354 pages. And I'm like, um, I think I just got to like chapter three. So not that far in. It is good, but it's kind of like, I don't know. I think it's just because I'm like so slow. Like I'm like not, I'm kind of going into reading slow. I don't really feel like reading it right now. It's kind of really, really slow for me right now. But it's getting good. They also, the book I just started last night is A Love Letter to Whiskey by Kennedy Steiner. As I said, I'm going into a book slump. I feel myself falling into a book slump. And Kennedy Steiner has helped me get out of my book slumps that I've kind of been falling into this summer. Um, so I just know that whenever I need a good book to go to, I can just run to her. And I'm reading A Love Letter to Whiskey because this is like, I feel like she talks about this book a lot herself. And I don't know, I just feel like it's one of her, it's the fifth anniversary edition, which is this cover on Kindle Unlimited. Um, and I'm just like, I'm in the mood for a good Steiner book. Also, with September coming up and Quarterback Sneak, the last book in the like, that kind of like series, I guess you could call it, or trilogy, comes out in October. So I think in September, I most definitely want to make it a point to go back and read Fair Catch because I already read Blindside. So yeah. I'm gonna, it's going to kind of be a Kennedy Steiner month. Um, but yeah, those are all the books that I've read. I am going to let you guys go, and I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye!